Hello and welcome everybody. Hello. Welcome everybody to this, the first meeting of the very first Citizens' Assembly of Scotland. Yay. Uh, I'm Kate Wimpress, one of the conveners of the Assembly, and I'm working alongside my fellow convener, David Martin. But I think it's important to take a moment to recognise this landmark point in how ordinary people from across Scotland are able to participate in shaping Scotland's future. And I, for one, am incredibly pleased to be able to play a role in this. I'm very much for looking forward to working with you, uh, the Assembly members of this first Citizens' Assembly of Scotland, over the next six weekends that we'll be meeting together. We're going to take forward this exciting opportunity we've been given to help shape the future of how government better engages the people of Scotland in important decisions about all our futures. Now, you may have spotted I'm not from around these parts. I was lucky enough to make Scotland my home 17 years ago, and I'm raising a family here. And I truly love this country, so it is honestly a true honour for me to be standing here and speaking to you today. But while David and I will be leading the Assembly, you, the Assembly members, are the ones who will be setting the agenda. We are here to help you have your voice heard uh, about the future of Scotland, to listen to what you have to say and to take your ideas, concerns and recommendations out to the wider public when we speak on your behalf. So you are the Assembly members and you are driving this process. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means later on today. Now you know who I am and who David is, but you'll maybe have noticed that there's other people in the room with us today. Firstly, uh, at the very back, we have a camera here and it is filming what is happening uh, at the front so that it can be live streamed online. Um, anyone who is interested outside the room can follow the progress of the Citizens' Assembly that way, watching and listening to the presentations at the same time as us. But I think it's really important to note for today that it is only filming the speakers from the front of the room. Um, whenever you go into your table discussions, the filming will be turned off. Um, I'd also like to introduce Ian Davidson. Uh, he's the Secretary for the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland, and you'll hear more from Ian later on. And I'd also like to introduce the wider Secretariat team uh, who are in the room. Yay! Uh, they've been busy, really busy, working with us to organise the meetings of the Assembly, and you'll have spoken to some of them in the run-up to today, and you'll have met many more of them um, when you arrived in the hotel this morning. Now, they're here to support you through all of the meetings. Um, so any questions you have, just ask them and they'll be able to sort things out. And if they can't sort things out, they'll know somebody who can. Seated at the back of the room are some members of the stewarding group uh, who have provided advice and support to us as conveners in preparing for today. They're here to observe, um, but, they'll, uh, but they'll be staying at the back today, uh, not able to listen into your deliberations as they go on. Um, you can spot who they are by their red badges. Now, some of them may want to speak to you during the breaks to kind of find out how the process is going for you, but it is entirely up to you whether you want to talk to them or not. Uh, we also have a few journalists at the back as well. They are here to cover our first meeting and will be speaking to me and David about what we are hoping to achieve today and tomorrow. For this weekend at least, we've asked the media uh, not to speak directly to yourselves, the Assembly members, because we thought it only fair that you get a chance to familiarise yourself with each other and with the task ahead, kind of in, in private, and work out uh, your negotiation with this process. However, at a later date, uh, there may be an opportunity for some of you to speak with the press if you so wish. We also have a research team uh, who will be joining us throughout the six weekends. As I said earlier, the Citizens' Assembly is a new thing for Scotland, and it's important that we learn uh, from weekend to week weekend and across the whole process. It's such an important thing. We need to really learn uh, from, from us gathering here together. The research team, who are independent from the conveners and the secretariat, will tell you a little bit more about this work later on. And finally, but by no means least, 
um, we have a facilitation team who are sitting at your tables. At each of them, at each of your tables, you've got a facilitation team wearing a dark blue t-shirt today, and they will work with you throughout the day and at all our meetings. Um, and they will be led today by Anthony, who is sitting at the front. So finally, from me, a sincere thanks again for embarking on this unique and fascinating journey with us. It is your thoughts, your experiences and your opinions as Assembly members that really matter and that make the Citizens' Assembly such powerful democratic tools. So I'm going to hand over to Anthony now, who's going to introduce his role and cover off a few of the practicalities for the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. I'm going to take two minutes of your time. Um, I'm Anthony. I'm leading the team of facilitators here today. And the most important thing to remember about the facilitators is they are here to make your life easy. They can't you know, paint your house or redo your drive, but they can at least help your discussions go well. And they're here to help you. They're here to guide you around the process. And most importantly, to make sure that all of the voices in the room are heard and everyone has a fair opportunity to talk about who they are. They've been brought from a range of organisations based here in Scotland and elsewhere, all of whom are expert facilitation organisations and who are totally independent in this process. So they are here to make sure we get a fair representation of everyone's voice throughout the entire week, uh, all of the weekends of this process. Um, on a much more boring and less inspiring note, the toilets are through there and on the left. Um, there isn't a fire alarm. Uh, so a planned, fire drill planned. So if there's a fire alarm, it's a real one. Please calmly make your way towards the exits, which you'll see marked all around the room. Um, the other thing to say is that the timings for this weekend are quite tight. Uh, because we are doing just from lunchtime Saturday to lunchtime Sunday, we are packing quite a lot in to help you understand the process, to help you get to know each other, and to get to know your facilitators and the people around the process. That might mean that at times it feels a bit rushed. So I'm sorry for that in advance. It won't be like that every other weekend. This is really the kind of getting to know you introduction weekend. We hope you'll still have a fantastic time. If you feel like we're rushing you through it, we probably are. But for future weekends, there'll be plenty of time for you to relax and spread out and, and say a bit more about your opinions and your views. So just up front on that. Um, and finally, on social media, we're going to be talking a little bit about social media and the social media policy uh, later on during this morning. Um, until then, can I please ask you to hold off Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook. Just make sure that you're keeping it within the room for now. And then we'll have a proper talk through uh, social media and the use of social media a bit later on. Um, we are here, the facilitators are here, for any questions about the facilitation process. But as Kate said, it's the Secretariat who've done all of the hard work getting you all here, getting everything sorted out, making all of the arrangements. If there's any questions about the, uh, the aspects to do with the Secretariat's work, with arrangements for tonight, where am I meant to be, when am I meant to be there, then the Secretariat desk, which is out there as well, will be able to help. Or you can approach the Secretariat who have blue badges. So go and speak to them at any time. That is all I wanted to say um, at this point. The next, um, the next part of the agenda is to hear a little bit more about the process of the day and to hear about the, the way in which the Assembly is going to work and how we're here. So I'm going to hand over to David for that. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, members of the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland. This is uh, a special moment, the convening of the Assembly, and it's my happy duty to say a few words about what the Assembly is, what we're going to be discussing, and what you've been asked to, to do. Now, no doubt you will all have lots of thoughts and questions about what we will achieve through the Citizens' Assembly. The bad news is I'm not going to answer all of those right now, but I'm going to give you an outline of where we hope to be going. This weekend is just the start, as you've heard, of our journey together. A chance to get to know each other, and it's been great to hear the buzz around the, the room already to talk about your experiences, your hopes, and your concerns about the future of our country and how the Assembly can help the country move forward together. The Assembly was established by the Scottish Government in a statement by the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, to the Scottish Parliament on the 24th of April. Not that we've been counting, but that statement was exactly six months and two days ago. Not a long time, 
Uh, and from a standing start, I have to pay credit to Ian and the wonderful secretariat that we've put together in managing to get you, notwithstanding Scott Reel's efforts, in this room today, ready and willing to, to go. And we are now ready to start our journey together. In her statement, the First Minister spoke about the challenges of Brexit, the very different views of the political parties and the people across Scotland more generally about the way forward for the country. She spoke about the need to take decisions about our future in a different way that neither ignores nor seeks to suppress differing views. She said that we should try to find ways of debating our choices respectfully and a way that seeks maximum areas of, of agreement and lays a foundation that allows us to move forward together whatever decisions are ultimately arrived at. And indeed, that's what citizens' assemblies are for. They have been used across the world to help tackle difficult and controversial issues. They involve citizens in considering evidence that is free from bias or political spin and is presented in a way that everyone can understand. They discuss issues in a respectful way so that everyone's views are heard. And coming to decisions which participants and the wider public can agree have been reached fairly, even where they do not agree on the conclusions. And that's important. It's not just about getting you all to come to a single point of view. That is not an objective. It's about reaching a point where even if you disagree with the conclusions, you believe we've arrived at those conclusions fairly. And that's the background to the Citizens' Assembly. Over 100 of you, broadly representative of the wider adult population in Scotland, brought together to consider issues about the future of the country and to make recommendations that will help the country move forward as far as possible by agreement. And you will be familiar with this already, but the questions that we've been asked to look at by the government are, firstly, what kind of country are we seeking to build? How can we best overcome the challenges that Scotland and the world faces, including those arising from Brexit? What further work should be carried out to give people the detail they need to make informed choices about the future of the country? These are very broad questions, and you will have thoughts about how we will go about answering them. Essentially, as Kate said, it is for the Assembly collectively to decide how to go about this. The government has made it clear that it, is, that it wants you to decide with the guidance of Kate and I as conveners. The process we are starting today will take us on this journey, but it might be helpful if I set out a few comments on how Kate and I have been thinking about these issues. First of all, the Assembly is obviously taking place against the backdrop of significant uncertainty about Scotland's place in the world, including our relationship with our near neighbours in the UK and our wider partners in the European Union. In particular, we don't know for certain yet whether we will remain in the e EU or we will leave the EU, when we will leave, what conditions we will leave under. So, in terms of Brexit, complete unknowns at the moment. The Scottish Government has also made it clear its intention to hold a further independence referendum next year and to update the prospects, prospectus on independence in advance of that referendum. We're all aware of the upheaval taking place at Westminster and that just serves to demonstrate the further uncertainty about the, the outlook for our constitution and our politics. And for our discussions, this backdrop matters. There is no doubting that different constitutional journeys will have a profound impact upon the lives of our citizens. There will be choices to be made, but we are, I'm afraid, not here to decide whether any of these choices are good or bad for Scotland. Some of you might disagree with that course. They might say that's precisely what we are about here. But for me, that is to miss the point of the Assembly. We all hold views on these matters to some degree or other, but the Assembly is not about debating the general merits of constitutional outcomes. It's not about winning or losing these arguments. It's not a platform for any political view or any political party. It's not a substitute for the proper process for decision-making through elections or referendums. And, you know, in any case, it would not be possible even over six weekends to take the range of evidence and undertake the deliberation required to work through all these constitutional choices and come to an agreed conclusion which could realistically be agreed and seem to have been reached 
fairly by the Assembly members. Our recommendations will be absolutely critical to ensuring that the country can take decisions on, all, on an informed basis and that we can move forward by agreement, whatever decisions are taken. It's a very real opportunity to change how people are involved and supported at these moments, to set out new standards for the quality of information that we are provided with and new standards on how discussion on contentious issues are concluded. One of the questions that people who participate in the Citizens' Assembly often ask is what will happen to the results of their work. It's a very important question. In this case, our remit requires us to set out recommendations in a report to be presented to the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament. That report will be published within a month of our final meeting next April. The Government has committed to ensuring that our report will be debated in Parliament and will produce a plan setting out how it intends to take forward those of our recommendations that are agreed by the Scottish Parliament. These are important undertakings, which I hope demonstrates that politicians are committed to acting on our conclusions. Kate and I are both tremendously excited to be joining you in this incredible journey, but I'm sure, like us, you'll all feel at this moment a little bit daunted about what we're embarking upon, as well as excited. We have a lot to get through over our six weekends. We promise you that we won't, and Anthony's reassured you of this beyond this weekend, we won't be rushing you through this. The first weekend is not about answering the big questions in our remit, but it's about getting to know each other, to talk about our experiences and our hopes for the Assembly. And finally, as we get going, it's important to point out that there will be a lot of interest among the media and among friends and families in what the Assembly is about and what it is doing. It will be very important that everyone takes care in this spotlight. We will talk later about some of the arrangements we are putting in place and how we should deal with the media, including the social media, as Anthony's outlined. But in the meantime, please don't be too concerned at the prospect of any of that. You will have lots of support as we go on this journey, not just Kate and I as conveners, but the Secretariat, who you can contact any time before a meeting during a meeting or after a meeting if you have any concerns. So, in conclusion, I'd like to personally thank you all for agreeing to be part of the Assembly. This is a historic moment for Scotland. We're a big moment in the future of Scotland and you're making a huge commitment in terms of your time and your energy in agreeing to be involved. I'm very confident that you're all going to have a great experience and Kate and I look forward to working with every one of you over the next six or seven months. Thank you all very much. Um, thanks, David. So you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, right, uh, how, how will this assembly work? And I'm going to say a few words before we really get into the, the, the kind of the meat of the, uh, the day. So the Citizens' Assembly is probably going to be different from any other public uh, meeting or discussion of political issues that you've been involved with before. Um, that's because it's been established as a deliberative process, a process through which people, yourselves, um, not, not just despite their different opinions, but actually really because you have different opinions, can learn together and identify where they can find common ground. Now, traditional political discussions in this country, and let me be clear that whenever I say po politics or political issues, I'm not talking about the work of politicians, um, but also about discussions in the media, in communities, or on dinner tables, perhaps in pubs, um, about the decisions that are made that affect people's lives. So traditionally, these types of political discussions are framed around the idea of debate, um, which is literally where one side tries to beat down the other side and win. Um, so the Assembly is different to that. Now, while we're going to be discussing some very important and potentially very divisive topics, we're going to try and do things radically differently. Rather than focusing on debate um, in the Citizens' Assemblies, we are going to focus on trying to build up a dialogue uh, between members that help us better understand different perspectives. 
And although both David and I have already said that this Citizens' Assembly is a first for Scotland, um, Citizens' Assemblies themselves are becoming an established way for governments around the world to do just that, to better understand the views and priorities of the populations they are elected to represent. So as we move forward, you, the Assembly members, will be involved in determining what issues you want to explore, the types of information you think you need in order to discuss them properly, and how, as a group, we're going to develop recommendations and come to decisions. So on a Saturday afternoon at half past 12, that might seem like a very difficult task. But we do have a team of people with skills and experience in facilitating deliberative processes like this who are working with us to help, this, help do this in a, in a very fair and inclusive way. So how is it actually going to work? Well, over the next five weekends that we'll spend together, um, you'll be sitting in, in tables much as you are today in small discussion groups. And we'll mix the groups up each day so you'll get a chance to talk to all of the other Assembly members. Throughout the meetings, you'll have the opportunity to hear from a wide variety of speakers. Um, some of these will be presenting you with factual information about the current state of play in Scotland. And some of them will be presenting arguments to you about why they believe we need change uh, and what things they need, uh, we need to change. But crucially, you'll have the opportunity to discuss what you learn with your fellow Assembly members to explore different arguments presented, uh, to explore what the different arguments presented to you would mean in real life and for the things that are very important to you. These discussions are vitally important they're the, I think they're the most important part of the assembly process. Um, as David has already, has already noted, you've been brought together as a group that is broadly representative of the population of Scotland. Talking through some of the issues we'll be looking at together will be a chance to kind of get out of our usual bubbles. Um, you know, in day and daily life, you usually hear mostly from people who are a lot like ourselves. We want the assembly to be an enjoyable experience for you. And later today, we'll be working together to look at what procedures we can put in place to ensure everyone is able to feel confident, able to have their say, and know that they will be listened to. And finally, it'll be up to you collectively to evaluate the evidence that, uh, that is put before you in light of your own experiences and what you learn from your, the views of your fellow Assembly members to draw conclusions, and at that point, develop the Assembly's recommendations for government. This weekend truly is our starting point. It'll be a chance for everybody to get to know each other, uh, to get to know us as conveners, and, and really start off on this journey together. And we're also going to be spending some time making sure that you understand the process, um, you understand how the process will work, and what is expected of you, and begin to learn about some of the issues that the Assembly will cover. We're also going to start exploring our views and understandings of Scotland and the challenges and opportunities ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to tell you what you can expect to happen over the course of the rest of the day. Um, you may have noticed you've already been welcomed. I hope you feel very welcome. Um, and we've done some of, the, um, some of the administration. We have to do a few more bits and pieces, which we'll come on to in a minute, about making sure that we have your consent for the various things that are happening around research, around media, and so on and so forth. So your table facilitators have some forms for you to fill in. They'll explain it all in, in a moment, but that's one of the things we'll come on to shortly. Um, we also have a code of conduct and conversation guidelines. These are things that we're going to be working, working with throughout the whole week, all of the weekends of the process. So it's important that you understand what they are. And for the conversation guidelines, you'll have the chance to add to them, to, you know, to make your suggestions as to things that you would like to see in the guidelines, as well as the starter that we've put together for you. Um, the exercise that we'll be doing today is to ask you for your views on what it's like living in Scotland. Now, it isn't a right and wrong answer thing. Most of these discussions are not right and wrong answer things. So the most important thing is to get your, ex uh, get your views out there and to express yourselves. Um, we'll be doing that uh, a little bit after lunch, and then there's some free time towards the end of the session, after which there's dinner provided here at 5.20, and then uh, the participants will be at a reception at Edinburgh Castle to mark the start of the Citizens' Assembly process and the launch, which is 
uh, in the early part of the evening, and then we're back tomorrow for more discussions, and I'll go through the agenda for tomorrow then. If you have any questions about the agenda, if any of this isn't clear, or if it, doesn't, if it isn't clear as we go through it, your table facilitators can help, and they have coloured cards, which they can hold up to get attention from me as the lead facilitator or from the secretariat team if they have questions about the process, how things are going, or about anything to do with content. So don't sit there and feel like you are confused, don't sit there and feel like you don't know what's happening next or you feel uncomfortable. We are here to make this an easy process for you and they can get our, get our attention really quickly and we can come and fix any problems in the moment. Um, so uh, you will have an opportunity right now to talk to your table facilitators and to get people uh, to get to know the people at your table um, because we are going to do a short icebreaker. You will be relieved to hear we are not going to ask you to stand on the table and drop back into people's arms or do any sort of dancing or singing. I mean, do that at the castle later if you like. That's absolutely fine. Um, we're actually going to ask you to introduce yourselves to each other and to the table facilitator. And then we're going to ask you to share a hope you have about being part of this process and a fear. So your table facilitators have instructions on how, how this is going to unroll. We have 20 minutes to do it. So I'm going to ask you to turn to your table facilitators and get that process started. I hope you all had a, a pleasant lunch and I hope we're not about to give you indigestion. But we want to now talk about the Code of Conduct. Ian from the Secretariat is going to run through the Code of Conduct. But just a few words from me, literally a few words from me on this. I think you've already gathered that the difference between a citizen assembly and a public meeting or a focus group is that we're about respectful discussion between ourselves. And that the aim of a citizen assembly is to make sure that every single voice in this room counts equally, no matter where you come from, educationally, socially, ethnically, or anything else, everybody has to have an equal voice. And we want no one to fear speaking out and to be heard at the table. Now, that's not saying we don't want robust discussion, because we do want robust discussion. But we want it done in a way that everybody feels at ease in speaking their own mind. And that's what the Code of Conduct's about. It's not an attempt to, in any way, restrict uh, your ability to express your views. But it's about to make sure that everybody else doesn't feel restricted in expressing their views. So Ian's going to run through it now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kayla. I think you're saying to me, can we what? Okay. I'm just going to ad lib here whilst the forms are distributed too. What I don't want you to get take away from this weekend is the impression that the modern civil service is entirely about bureaucracy and form filling. But in saying that, could I just ask you to fill in this next form for me? <clears throat> okay. Could I also just say this is part of the initiative test of being part of the Citizens' Assembly for Scotland, is how many forms can we cope with at one time? We've dealt with the first phase, now we're upping the ante to the next one. I think Kayla is telling me, sorry, I haven't introduced Kayla. Kayla, this is Kayla, who's doing everything, um, is telling me we're now good to go. Apologies for that, folks. So, yes, it is my job to introduce you to the Code of Conduct for members of the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland and also the guidance on media and social media as well. Um, so the Code of Conduct, please, again, um, don't read too much into this. As David has said, this is simply about a large group of people. We just need to have a few ground rules to manage our conversation. This is all stuff that I hope you would agree is how you would wish to uh, conduct your relationships with people in the room and indeed is all the stuff that you would do outside anyway. But a wee chance to have a discussion about it on the tables before we ask you 
to sign it up. So um, what it is, is a series of things that we ask you members to do and that you don't do, and just that you sign this recognising that um, you've made some commitments here. And as I say, plenty of chance to have a chat about it at the tables. And if there's any issues then um, or anything that you want further clarification on that the facilitators aren't able to help with, then myself and others from the Secretariat can be available to have a chat with you about it. So, so please come and speak to us about it. So what we're asking you to do, first of all, is to make every effort to be here on time and to participate in discussions. E even today, loads, I mean, actually everybody's busted the gut to get here in time and that's absolutely marvellous and things will go wrong. So please don't worry about any of that. We're just asking you to make that commitment to try and do it and talk to us if there's any issues and, you know, we can sort all that out. Um, please work with the facilitators at the table in guiding you through discussions. They are genuinely here to help. At times that will get, you know, um, challenge in the discussions and we can get lost so please just remember that your facilities are there to help and um, the obvious things about let's treat each other with respect both each other in, in the room the staff and other assembly members at all times and hopefully that goes without saying but important to re record it and a really important one is about respecting everybody's privacy we all have different tolerances about these things but it's really important for your working relationship that you respect the privacy of fellow members including that you don't publish photographs or record what they've said in discussions and, and talk about it without people's express permission um, so those are a mix of actual things members will and will not do. There's, there's other things we're asking you not to do, which is uh, most obviously be under the influence of drugs or alcohol during assembly sessions. And obviously that's because there's not enough beyond the secretariat to go round. So you'll have to leave that activity to us on your behalf and we'll do our best. Um, and please don't comment on assembly proceedings and on the role of members in a way that's untrue and undermines the process. There, there may be lots of people out there who would like you to do that, um, but please just have a mind uh, about that and, and, and be careful around it. And there's some things that you're definitely signing up to that we're asking you to sign up to by, by signing this form. And that's, first of all, as we explained to you when you were recruited in the first place, that your name and the region of Scotland that you come from will be published. Now, this was a big issue for, for, for us in, in, in looking at this, and it, it's simply because there is a lot of interest about who's involved in the Assembly. People have a right to know something about where people are from, but we've kept that at a very high level, and you know, we'll talk a little bit more about, about the, the regional distribution of people. But there was a commitment that we felt that we had to do, um, just at least to release those names in parliamentary region. But you know, hopefully you've all realised that already from the recruitment process. Um, now, if you can't attend all the meetings um, without good reason, then I think there's, there's a question about whether you can continue to be members. Hopefully that won't happen for people, and obviously there's circumstances in which it might be difficult, but I think the commitment is that you're making a commitment to attend the sessions as far as possible. And really importantly, you're participating as an individual. You're not representing any external organisation or interest group. You may be members of those external organisations or interest groups, and that's absolutely fine. But you're here as an individual, and everybody's individual voice counts as much as everybody else. And the other one, and probably the most important of all, is that you comply with all reasonable requests from the Secretariat. Just makes our life much easier. But we'll, we will conduct ourselves with dignity and respect towards you as well, but uh, please do. So, um, what happens if the Code of Conduct isn't complied with? Well, conveners are here to not to police this, not to enforce this, but to be there to work through any issues. And critically, as a starting point of this, in this is if you have any concerns about any aspect of this, about any aspect of a behavioural thing from, from anybody, frankly, whether they be secretariat, facilitators, fellow members, then speak to us, speak to conveners, and we will deal with all of these things sensitively. Hopefully no issues will come up, but, but that's the process anyway, that conveners are there to oversee all of that. So um, that's the code of conduct, and there's two copies there. There's one copy for you to sign and give back to the table facilitators and one copy for you to retain. Um, 
But I could I just mention uh, briefly as well the guidance on media and social media. And we've got a, a young man, he's young compared to me, um, Elliot Ross, who's a freelance researcher and journalist. And Elliot's going to be joining our team in the next few weeks. But we thought we'd make him for work for free before that. Um, so we've talked a lot about media and social media already, and I don't want people to, to get unduly carried away with that. On media... Um, the general approach would be that it's, it's up to you ultimately if you speak to journalists, as we said before. What we'd ask you to do is to do that through us. Uh, you don't have to, but we'd ask you to. We can help support you with any queries that you get from journalists. We have a public relations agency, so we can help you with all of these things. And if you get asked to do interviews, and if you're up for doing those interviews, again, you know, we're there to help support you with that. So it is, an, it is up to you, but please do not feel obliged to engage with the media. Please don't feel like you must answer questions. Um, if you wish to do so, then, then you are free to do so, but please work with us and let us know what's, what's going on. Um, because, as you can tell, these things can, can get quite challenging and quite tricky when you're not used to doing them. I think having a voice from you as individual members out there in the community is going to be really, really important, but let's just try and do that in a measured way. And social media, well, I, I have the great advantage of not really knowing how to tweet, which I'm afraid to say is not right in the modern world, I know. But, you know, different people engage with this differently and it can be a challenging space. So this guidance here is about that. There is no ban on social media. It is for you to behave responsibly. However, you must respect your fellow members and their privacy in particular. And please don't do anything which would undermine the assembly process. But um, Elliot's going to say a few more words about that and at the end of that we'll give you a few more minutes to discuss all of the stuff around your tables and hopefully to sign those forms and say if there's any issues then you can talk to us out of the room about them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much Ian. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Elliot Ross. I'm a journalist and a researcher. I'm just going to uh, take you through um, a bit more information about social media use um, in the Assembly, um, expanding a little bit on what uh, Anthony said earlier and what Ian um, has also just said. Um, so basically, we, we recommend that as members of the Assembly, you just take care in commenting um, generally or identifying yourself as a member of the Assembly on social media. Uh, there's a few key reasons for this. Firstly, the need to completely respect the privacy and consent of fellow members. This can be risky and a bit tricky when posting content on social media. Secondly, social media is very difficult to control in terms of audience and how people choose to engage with posts. A user may innocently post their thoughts in good faith, but bring unwanted and negative attention on themselves. This is especially true where political matters are concerned. The common mode of engagement for many social media users is highly confrontational. This is due to the inbuilt lack of context on social media platforms. It's also because of how differently we tend to speak to each other online as opposed to in person. I'm sure many of us have experienced the very special joys of having a furious argument with someone on the internet, perhaps even someone that we actually know, um, whose main objective in life uh, seems to be to wind you up and get you into a shouting match. There's also the risk of outright trolling. Uh, it's very time consuming and can be stressful. In this context, it could risk undermining the assembly process, which would obviously be the last thing uh, that we want to happen. Um, so should you wish, you can post on social media during the discussions and deliberations of the assembly, but it's really your contributions within the room that matter most, and that that's where we hope your, your focus will be. The assembly is a special and unusual space that's been carefully created so that you and other members can listen to high quality evidence and deliberate on it together in real time in the room. It's designed to produce quite different kinds of conversations to what we typically see on social media because it's really a place for you to know your own mind. Um, so we ask you just to take care with your social media activity uh, and if you have any concerns or issues um, about this then just speak to any member of the Secretariat uh, on this as with everything else. They're just here to help. Thanks very much. So um, just to say, there's going to be a short period now where you can take a look at that media and social media policy and the code of conduct and discuss it among yourselves and with your table facilitators 
Um, and then by, at the end of that, uh, please do sign the Code of Conduct is the one thing that we do require. So the consent, previous consent forms were optional. This isn't optional because if you can't sign up to those rules, then uh, we, we need to have a conversation about continuing in the process. So if you feel unable to sign the consent form, please let your table facilitator know, uh, the Code of Conduct, please let your facilitator know. But there's some time to talk about it and get any issues or concerns out. The Secretariat team are around the room and are here to help answer any questions about why it's like that, why we're saying this, why we're saying that, uh, both on that and on the media issue. So it'll take 10 minutes to do that now. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you had um, a really productive discussion. So um, just, to, uh, just to remind you how we're going to use those five ideas, five words that you came up with, um, overnight, we are going to turn those into, we're going to cluster those and turn them into a, a word cloud, a kind of set of words that we're going to present back to you tomorrow in the exercise where we're going to be talking about the future and the Scotland that we want to see. Um, but now we're going to go back to one of the earlier sessions where you were talking about the conversation guidelines. I'm going to ask Kayla from the Secretariat, who with my colleague Kevin has been putting the additional guidelines together, to talk you through them. Okay, so first up, let me say, you came up with hundreds and hundreds of ideas between you. So we have had to kind of try and group some of them together, try and edit them down, and I just want to talk through them and show you where we've grouped some of them together as well. So hopefully you will see the, the ideas that you had and your table were discussing actually reflected back here into the room. So I've tried to write them as big as I could. I know people at the back might not be able to read them, when we have them for real, tomorrow we'll have them up in different places in the room as well. So, in no particular order, the first one up here is that idea of share airtime. So actually, there are whole groups of you trying to talk at the tables, and when we get really into things, it's about making sure that we're having one conversation as a whole group, and that everybody in that whole group gets to take part. That we're not having side conversations unless that's actually part of what we're trying to do, or part of the exercise. We've got don't grandstand. Came up quite a few times, the idea of once people start getting you know, passionate about something they're really, that they feel is really important, that, that thing of just keeping needing to keep going, keep going. So that idea of please don't grandstand with each other. Came up quite a few times, the idea of asking questions, but also that there really is no such thing as a stupid question. And as we move forward and we move into some of the learning stage, and things that are going to be brand new to you are going to be introduced, ask questions. There's no point sitting there not following what's going on because you're probably not the only person in the room in the same boat. You just might be the bravest one to go first with the question. Be mindful of your language and your body language. There was quite a few things on the notes that we're talking about, you know, we're, we're a really different group of people. We need to be careful, a little bit mindful of just making sure that we're not using language that might make some people feel uncomfortable. And body language, sitting there, you know, shaking your head, giving that sort of visual sign that you think someone's talking rubbish. It's not going to be helpful to help us have a good conversation. Respect and value different opinions. I don't think you need me to explain what that one is, but that came up on lots and lots of the post-it notes. Take, take risks in the conversation, even if it's scary. So, you know, you, this is a place that you can test out ideas, test out thoughts, test out even things that, you know, I'm not quite sure what I think about this yet, but take risks and start exploring and developing those ideas. That we want it to be a safe space and a safe space to be honest about your opinions. And as part of that, it needs people to be honest about what they think. So try and use that and, and, you know, just because your opinion might be different to some of the other people at the tables, that's why we're here, to get all those different ones. Okay. We can agree to work well together, even if we don't agree. And some of these are very similar, but they're, they're, they're slight different emphasis that people were having, that particular thing of, we want to work well together. Get to the point, don't just talk too long for the sake of it. Pretty self-explanatory. Be kind and supportive to each other. 
came up in a number of the post-it notes about, you know, we are all really different, and some people find this a much more comfortable experience, an experience they're familiar with, the experience they're willing to, like, just jump straight into a conversation. But others might need a little bit of help, a little bit of encouragement to get involved. So really support people who you notice maybe aren't getting as involved so quickly. <laughs> Emphasizing, no such thing as a stupid question, it's up there twice. <laughs> Be open to learning. We've talked a lot about, you know, this is a process of learning and testing out all the stuff we're learning to see what opinions we form. But be open to actually, you might learn some new stuff, you might learn some things that surprise you, and maybe even be open to changing your mind about things. Once you start getting into discussions, it's quite possible that you suddenly go, oh, I hadn't thought about it like that before. Have that openness that may be, you know, open to see what happens. Keep to the topic. Some of the, as we get talking, there will be times that we will be focusing on something really specific. It's about keeping to that topic as much as we can and realizing that there will be time to have other conversations later. And one that came up quite a lot, which hopefully is a good one, trust in the process and the facilitators. So hopefully that means the facilitators so far are doing a good job there, but that belief that actually they're there to help guide that conversation. So trust in them, trust in what they're trying to get you to do when we introduce exercises and go with it. So quite a lot, and hopefully we've picked up on most of the things people were talking about in their early conversations. Is there anything really obviously missing that you think was from the earlier conversations? And we will have a chance to add more later if there is. Okay, judgmental isn't up there. I guess it was sort of in some of the things. I think I can add judgmental. So it's about, well, not judging, not judging. And yeah, confidentiality, we did talk about it in the code of conduct, but it probably is worth re-emphasizing here that actually keeping people's confidentiality, if people are telling you stuff about themselves, their lives, they're doing it in the confine of this, this room, this space, the conversations we're having. And I'll write it into a proper sentence later. I think we need mics for a lot of this, so. Anything? You're right, there is one we missed. It was about um, jargon. Not using jargon, not using acronyms, not using initials, but actually using plain language that everybody can understand. So no jargon. And I, I know that actually we haven't got everyone's individual words, but hopefully if there's it's big things missing, now's the time to capture them. It was, just, it was related to that last one, but it's that English isn't the first language of everybody in the room, so. How would you like me to put that up? <laughs> I'll put back to you, Michael. Um, <laughs> Something about keeping clear, simple language. Okay, I'll just put it up as I'll just put it up as language at the minute. But when we rewrite them, we know that that's what I'll rewrite into it. That idea that, yeah, English isn't the first language for other people. And it was highlighted on some of the post-it notes. There's people with sort of different levels of education. Let's just keep things at a, a point that actually we can all understand. We don't need to overcomplicate stuff. I don't, I mean, if there's anything important missing, we can add. We can also add through the, through the remaining weekends. If something else comes up that we go, actually, something's not really working for us, we want to try and bring in another ground rule. That's something we can definitely do. So, basically, what we need to know now is, are you as a group broadly happy that these are the types of guidelines you can, you can work with for the next five weekends that we meet and tomorrow. And can we have a show of hands if you think they work for us? I can't quite tell if it's completely unanimous, but it's definitely the vast majority of the room. And I think that means that as a set of guidelines, there's something 
that we can definitely try and work with. And we can always come back and revise if we need to at a later date. So I think we'll take them as past. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, everybody. So we are, we are definitely on the, on the slope, accelerating towards the end of the, uh, the, end of the day. Um, and I'd like to now hand over to David and Kate, uh, who've been looking, who disappeared, you might have noticed while you were having that discussion, disappeared to look at the hopes and fears charts, because there were too many hopes and too many fears to bring through. Um, and they've had a look at those, and they're going to reflect for a little bit on, uh, on the first day. And then I'm going to give you uh, lots of practical information about what's going to happen for the rest of the day and timings for tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. It probably feels like about four days since I was standing here at the very beginning. But we've only been in the room for a couple of hours. Um, but I just wanted to thank you for your enthusiasm for this process so far and also the warmth um, of the chat and the, the kind of general atmosphere in the room. It's been really um, enjoyable so far. Uh, but I'm sure there's some of you that are kind of swithering between, oh my God, I found my people, this is where I should be. And then others are probably thinking, I'm a Scottish citizen, please get me out of here. <laughs> but um, as uh, Anthony was able, uh, we were able to go and have a look at some of your, your hopes and fears. And I, again, I wanted to thank you for your generosity and the, the kind of the, the vulnerable space that you put yourself in there. Uh, there was some really quite touching comments but the ones that I wanted to feed back to you is that there's quite uh, a kind of fear of, of not being listened to, of opinions not mattering, of a lack of confidence in speaking up, and a lack of confidence in your opinion. Um, and I think that's that's a kind of shared fear uh, across the room, and that you know we're all to some extent in in that boat. Um, but this is a unique opportunity to, to hear from and reflect upon a diversity of, of voices. So there will be mechanisms uh, in place across the five weekends that we'll be together to capture thoughts and feelings and opinions. And if for whatever reason you think, actually, I've not quite got that across, I've not quite been able to share that, um, write it down, share it in another way, leave us a note, push something under somebody else's door. No, don't do that. Um, <laughs> But, you know, there's, there's other ways. There's other ways to do these things. Um, and that to, to really recognise and reflect upon the fact that it's the lived experience, to use a bit of a jargony term, sorry, it's, it's you're an expert in your own life, and that's what we want to uh, kind of share and, um, and kind of have those interesting and possibly at times uncomfortable and sometimes comfortable um, conversations because you are expert in your day and daily and um, that's why we're all here and I think that's what makes this unique and and I just ask you to to not make any snap judgments just now but just ebb and flow with us on the journey because sometimes it'll feel like you're in the best place in the world sometimes you'll think I'm just leaving now and not coming back but please do keep working with us on this journey because that's I think uh, when it's really all going to start happening so that was yeah I was just kind of picking up on the on the fears and hopes in the room and, and David's going to cover capture some of the fears out with thanks very much Kate um let me also add my thanks to your for your forbearance today. Uh, a lot of this has been today has been about putting the building blocks in place, and tomorrow we'll start to move on to the issues. And certainly, the following weekends we really will get into the, the detailed issues. But you've been very patient. So, as Henry VIII said to each of his wives, "I won't keep you long." <laughs> um, the fears in the room are you won't be listened to. The fears out the room are that we won't collectively be listened to. And I have to say. When I was asked to be one of the conveners, that was exactly my fear. I hesitated, not for long, but hesitated in accepting this position because I said, I don't want to be part of a talking shop that meets for six weekends and nothing comes of it. Uh, and Mike Russell, the minister responsible, has made it very clear that the government will listen to our report, that it will be presented to Parliament, and Parliament, we met the presiding officer of the Parliament, and Parliament will debate our report. Whether they'll act on it, I can give you no guarantees about that. But some of that also lies with us in the room and over the next five weekends. I can't believe that given the money the government's put into this weekend, into the assembly, that if we come up with coherent sets of proposals, they will not be acted upon. So it's up to us to make sure we have proposals that are workable and actionable. And I believe if we do that, 
then the product of our six weekends will be worthwhile. And as Kate said, for the moment, to some extent, you have to trust us, continue to work with us, uh, but for the rest of the day, enjoy yourself, enjoy the castle tonight, and we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Thanks. <laughs>